real Jesus Christ, the real Most High God, is nothing to play. That's right. When you come back, it's going to be bloodshed. A lot of us Israelites yeah. don't get put to death too because we don't want to hearken to this. They say it doesn't matter, but who keeps putting that white image out? If it doesn't matter, who puts this image out? All things matter and they know it matters. Uh, it only doesn't matter to you. Hey, my brother and sister, how y'all doing, fam? Good. Hey, we out here teaching that the black, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the Israelites. You got a flyer? And hey, you check us out and come see us. We right in Shreveport, my brother, on Lakeshore. Y'all, uh, all praise. We out here to prove that we are the chosen people of God and we the Israelites, y'all. Did y'all agree with that? Okay, okay, all praise. Have y'all been watching before? Have y'all watched online or anything like that? Yeah, I've seen y'all a lot, man. Okay, all praise. What you think? I'm just having a dialogue, y'all. Yeah, that's why I said, you know, she a big Bible person. I've been trying to, you know. Um, she a big follower? No, she, she like to read the Bible. Like, oh, okay, good, good, yeah. good. So, so okay, no, good. No, what, what Bible y'all reading from? We reading King James. King James. King James, right? which is a black man. A lot of people don't know yeah, that. see, like, I've been trying to... I've been trying to tell her how big our ancestors did, how bad, how more important black people is. Right, right. But she's like, you know, in, in the Bible, it don't really speak about rain. Yes, it does. Yeah, it does. The Bible is all about the Israelites. One group of people. The nation of Israel. The Israelites. That's right. Hey, that's what the Bible is all about. Yeah, it does. Watch it. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Watch it. I'm going to show you. And then we're going to go to uh, uh, 148. Psalms 148. You got me? Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. Bring it out. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So God says, I've chosen you, the Israelites, to be a special people among all people on the planet earth. Watch it. Let's see. Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Let's see who the audience is. Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Deuteronomy. Chapter 1 and verse 1. Bring it out. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. To all nations. Unto all Israel. Go back to Deuteronomy 7 and 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. So God is speaking to the Israelites, right? He says, I'm speaking to you Israelites. You above all people. Watch this. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people. Now equal to all people. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So he's dealing with Israel. He's always been dealing with Israel from the very beginning. So he says, I'm not dealing with what? Watch this, keep on. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. So God says, I'm not dealing with any nations. And as far as his judgments, they have not known them. That's why you want to ask, why did we go into slavery? Why it's so hard on us? Because God is chastising us because we are the chosen people of God. That's the reason why you came on cargo slave ships. Give me that in Sirach 25 about the uh, nationality. You know what I'm looking for? About the race? So she said something about that. I want to show you that's in the Bible. So as we read now, you see that, okay, so God is dealing with a race of people which are the Israelites. But what had happened today, they say, you know what? We all are equal. We all are the same people. And that's not true according to the Bible. So, 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 okay. Just so, since you say that, you know, so in the Bible, you know, in the whole Bible, it's kind of sick on man. They got all equal. Fuck, now you just, I just read it in the whole Bible. Yeah, right, right. So, right. like, see, this black thing is the only time I said I don't see the Bible and I don't believe all people in life. I'm going to show you the reason why. I'm going to show you. I'm going to give you a reason. Don't worry about that. Hold that. Give me that uh, Psalms 111 and 10, and then we're going to go to Isaiah 21. The reason why, guess what? They got this same Bible in the Christian church, all throughout the church. Matter of fact, your grandmothers and grandfathers may have it on the... Uh, on a nightstand with nothing but dust on it. Right. But why is it that we get a different understanding than they do? I'm going to show you why. This is the reason why. Psalms chapter 111 and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. God said this is the beginning of wisdom. To fear God. How do you fear God? Walking in this word, which is what? That's a vain statement. Uh oh, oh, stop right there. The Ten Commandments. Is it just Ten Commandments? No, I agree with you. But it's more than just Ten Commandments. You're right. God, by fearing Him, by keeping His commandments. Because guess what? In the Bible, it says a woman is not to bear double container to a man. 
Matter of fact, if you look at, can we sleep from man to man? Can a man sleep with another man? Is that in the Ten Commandments? No, but it's all throughout the Bible. The Bible is the book of law. That's why I say it's more than a, a, a Ten Commandment. This book is the book of law. Watch this, please. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding. A good understanding. Right? Now we go into understanding. How are we going to get an understanding of this Bible? Have all they that do his commandments. To do his commandments. That's how we get an understanding of the Bible. But not only that, child, but guess what? How are we supposed to read the Bible? You can, know what? You can read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. That's fine. But guess what? God commands us to read the Bible in a certain way. I'm going to show you. Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 10. Bring it out. what? By me showing you this right here through the Spirit of God, it's going to show you why they have a, a, a different understanding of the Bible than we do. Watch this. It's going to show you right here. Verse 10. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. So God says you're going to have to get a little bit in the Old Testament and a little bit in the New Testament. You may even have to go to the Apocrypha to get an understanding. That's, that's what he said. That's how he said. You should divide the Bible up. That's how it's supposed to be read. Watch this, y'all. Verse 11. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. So God says, you know what? In the last days, I'm not going to be speaking in Hebrew to my people. Because guess what? We was going to be scattered in our lands. Some of us may speak Hebrew. Some of us speak English. Some of us speak Spanish. There was going to be different languages that we was going to be speaking. No different than what you read in Acts 2 and 5. When they were speaking in tongues, they were speaking in different languages. Bring it out. That's it. Watch this. Verse 12. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. Yet, they would not hear. All right, so watch it. Jump down to, stay where you at. Jump down to, what verse was on right there? Jump down to, okay, 13. Yeah, 13. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 13. But the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Okay, so now God is saying, you know what? The word of God is to them too. To like, like you said, the sister right here. She so she loved the Bible. She reads the Bible. The same thing applies to her. What? Watch this. That they might go and fall backward. That they must do what? Go and fall backward. That you may, she read the Bible. She get a different understanding. She fall backwards. Because in Christianity, they say it's okay that you can eat pork as you pray on. That now they serve on a Sunday. Everything they've been taught to them has been grown. Right. But now that the Bible comes out and the prophets are reading and we have understanding because we keep God's commandments, we wear our peers, right? We have wives. That's how we get to understand. How you say in the Bible, they say it's safer for a man to have her? No. Okay, I got you. You know what I'm looking for. Watch this. When Paul was speaking about this, he's saying that, you know what? Yeah. I wouldn't suggest that a man wear hair, but guess what? There's no law against a man wearing long hair. And I'm going to show you why. Look at uh, uh, Samson. Did Samson have long hair? No, he was a uh, Nazarite. One of the things you have to grow your hair out. So where our understanding comes from? I'm going to show you that. You know what I got? Uh, okay, you jump up to verse 4. Jump up to verse 12. First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 12. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman, but all things of God. Okay, so now, verse, 13. Verse, verse 13. Judging yourselves, it is not comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered. So, sister, you're supposed to have your head covered. That's, that's, that's a law according to the Bible. That's not any ten commandments. But when the word of God is coming out, it's prophecy. The woman's head must be covered, and the man's head must be uncovered. That's a law according to the Bible. Watch this read. Doth not even nature teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. So right now, this is Paul speaking. Paul said, you know what? Nature, because our, us men, we don't grow natural hair long. You know, right? We don't grow long hair. Women do. But watch this. Watch what he say. Verse 15. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her. So it's a glory for a woman to have long hair. This is true. Woman had long, pretty hair. 
That's for glory. glory. Read. For her hair is given for her a covering. But if any man seem to be contentious. So if any man seem to be contentious, right? Read. We have no such custom. Neither the churches of God. So if any man want to wear his hair long, there's no laws against it. Saying you cannot have long hair. That's so guess what? Where there's no sin, there's no law, there's no sin. So there's not a sin for a man to wear long hair. Long hair. You got that? That will talk to you. Remember the Bible says precept was on them, precept upon precept. That way they fall backwards. You fell backwards on that. Your understanding of that fell backwards. There's no law. Samson had long hair. Even Solomon had long hair. Matter of fact, get Solomon. You know what I'm looking for? Solomon 5? Solomon. Black man. Who grows locks? This brother got locks. I got locks. This brother got locks. They call it locks. Treads. Yeah, they used to call it treads. But it's locks. Watch this. We'll show you that in the Bible. Songs of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 1. Right up. Songs of Songs, which is Solomon. Go over to the There you go. So this is Solomon speaking. Read. Chapter 5 and verse 11. His head is as a most fine gold. His locks are bushy. His locks are what? His locks are bushy. King Solomon had locks in his head, so that makes King Solomon a black man. Who got locks in their head? This brother got locks. This brother got locks. I have locks. That's right. His hair was bushy. If you let it grow, you need some new growth before you got to get it twisted. It is bushy. That's right. King Solomon was a black man, according to the Bible, That's with locks right. in his head. That's right. Read right. again. His head is as the most fine gold. His locks are bushy. His locks are what? Are bushy. Go over to Songs of Solomon 1 and 5. Songs of Solomon chapter 1 and verse 5. Yo. I am black. King Solomon is what? I am black. King Solomon just says, I am black. <laughs> Now, watch this, Job 30 and 30. We can show you color all throughout the Bible. All the prophets in the Bible was dark. As as y'all together? Yeah, see, I used to always say like... What do you mean a dark is sin? What do you mean by that? Sin is like Arabian, Hispanic, you know what I'm saying? Something like that. Right. I feel like we all God chosen people. We are. We are the chosen people of God. I mean, right. Which was in the Bible. The Bible shows us that we are the chosen people of God and we are the Israelite. That was a prophecy that we shall go in slavery. Did you know that? She was saying the Bible don't stand on y'all Out of the Bible. The Bible described. The Bible said, the question is Job 30 and 30. Job chapter 30 and verse 30. Bring it out. My skin is black upon me. Job just said, My skin is black upon me. This out of Job. Even in Revelation, it tells you Christ said, I'm a black man. Right. Christ described this Christ did a description of himself as being a black man of color. That's right. Even God gave a description of himself. Christ, a description of himself. But what happened? Christianity don't got in your mind. And you said it doesn't matter what color looks like. But they study put this white image in your face. They say it doesn't matter. But who keeps putting this white image out? If it doesn't matter, who put this image out? Bring it up. All things matter, and they know it matters. Oh, it only doesn't matter to you. That's right. We become so simple that we say the greatest man that walked the planet Earth was a black man, and then we be against it. Christ Jesus Christ was the greatest man that walked the planet Earth. Right. Right. And he was a black man, because if I would tell you Obama was a white man, they'd be ready to fight him. Martin Luther King was a white man. No, he wasn't. He was black. Keep that same energy with the greatest man that walked the planet Earth. That's right. He was a black man. And Africa, Jerusalem is in Africa, y'all. That's, That's right. right. Jerusalem is in Africa, y'all. Right there. Bottom right there. I know I'm speaking loud, sis. I'm, hey, I know it's loud, but guess what? The Bible says to speak loud and spread not. It's very possible. Right. I'm going to bring it down. He's like, damn, you loud. You know? <laughs> That's fine. Okay, I'll praise. Where is it? At the very bottom. At the very bottom. Uh, where we at? Far left. Egypt. Right next door to Egypt. Right back right there. There you go. Right there. How do you think we walked out of Egypt? It's in Africa. But guess what? Over time, the people migrated. We went into slavery. We went further into Africa during the 70 AD. When the Romans came, when Christ prophesied in Luke 21, he said, hey, when you see the horns from hands about, he said, flee into the mountain. He was saying, go deeper into Africa. Because prophecy has to be fulfilled. Right. That the Israelites was going to be destroyed as a race of people. Right. That's but in the end days, we shall come back. Over there. 
Yeah, so no, what did I have you always on? Oh, SD card. Oh, sorry. Okay, watch this. The most high. This is oh, God. Oh. Dang you. Chapter 7 and verse 9. Bring it out. Bring it out. To the thrones were cast down. The thrones is all these other nations. Rome. Not Rome, but uh, Russia. China. Right. Japan. Uh, Israel. America shall be cast down. That's right. How you think God's kingdom is going to rule with these other nations? Bring it out. Come on, y'all. Let's not be simple. If God's saying, I'm going to cast these nations down, what you think what's going to happen to America? Bring it up. You think America still is going to be in existence? Sure. Come on, y'all. Let's not be simple. <laughs> and the Ancient of Days did sit. Who is the Ancient I, of Days? Think about it, y'all. They said, and the Ancient of Days did sit. Since who is the Ancient of Days? <laughs> think about it. It said, in the ancient of days did sit. Who can only be the ancient? Who can be before time? Who created time? God, there you go. Because God is the ancient of days. He's before time. He's the one created it. The ancient of days. So now we are speaking about God, right? What did God, how, let's see what God looks like. In the ancient of days did sit. Whose garment was white as snow. Uh oh, so God had a garment on. So if I got a garment on, what they got? What I got to have? I got to have a body. Yes, I got to have a body to have clothing on. I just pray that I do it. And the hair of his head, like the pure wool. God head was like what? Like the pure wool. So God, who has woolly hair? God is a black man according to the Bible. Yeah, the Bible yeah, says right. this God has woolly hair. Again, woolly hair. Read. His throne was like a fiery flame, and his wheels is burning fire. And his wheels, the chariots, his transportation of moving forth is like the burning fire. That's what they call today the UFOs. No, those are Lord's chariots. That's you know what's so crazy? When our people was at the lowest we understood that in the cotton feet. Right. Sweet low, sweet chariot, coming for the carry Oh. That's But we have come so far from that. Because we think this is our rest. You have got comfortable here. My Lord, this place is going to burn up. Prophesied to burn up. That's why they got them big old planes like that fly. They know what time it is. Christ is coming for you and you and me. As the black Messiah, he is coming. It's going to be just like Egypt and worse. Eat your popcorn and sit back and enjoy. Christ yes. is coming to save you if you can repent and keep the commandments. Yes, we go. That's right. What you got for me, Austin? Watch this. Oh. Rogers, international thesaurus. Definition of Negro. Colored person. Black. Black or more. Jim Crow. Darky. Sambo. Ebony. The image of God. The image of what? The image of God. Why is it so hard? This is, hey, did we write that book? Sure. We didn't write that book. But it says the image of God. 1869. 1869 when that Bible was made. Where was you at in 1869? Jim Crow, slavery, cotton fields. That's right. That's right. See, one thing about it, y'all not messing with no ordinary Negroes. We study this Bible and we yes, study history. I'll be on y'all. You be on us. I'll be on y'all. Are y'all married? Get married, get married, get married. That put a smile on her face. But hey, get married. Yeah, we got her. Yeah, we working on it. She's working on it. Hey. Yeah, I've been watching style, but that's why I wanted to stop and let her know, because like she be reading the Bible. Sis. It be the whole different protection from when she telling you things. Yeah. Because I mean, my, my, my whole yeah, thing is me was like, I know how far. But you know what you got to get? You got to get on this side so you can teach your, yeah. you teach your wife. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to say your wife, teach your wife yeah, right. on what she's I'm supposed to do and how she's supposed to dress. But right now, you know you outside in your underwear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You didn't know that, right? She got to have like a... Uh, she got to have a dress. She got to be covered up. Because guess what? Our sister are naturally curvy. So when you come out, now I'm telling you, if your man went with you, dudes are probably trying to holler at you from dust to dust because they less than that shit because you are in your underwear. According to the Bible, we're not supposed to come out like that. The Bible right. said we're supposed to be shamefaced. Like only person supposed to see that is him. You know that, right? You know that. You know it, don't you? Yeah, I know. She's like, man, you right, you right. Let's get the law. Watch this, and then we're gonna give you the judgment if you in those in those underwears. When Christ come back, you've been put to death. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. Bring it up. The woman shall not wear 
that which pertaineth unto a man. So the Bible right now, the conversation is the woman. He says the woman is not to wear what pertaineth unto a man. What pertaineth unto a man is what? Ants. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like this. This is manly stuff. A woman back in the day in the cotton fields, and when I was sisters in slavery, they had on dresses. Watch this, y'all. A woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. And likewise, a man is not to put on a dress. Can be running around here looking like, uh, give me some of these people, like, uh, Martin Lawrence with the dress on. Who else, y'all? Shaq had a dress on. Uh, who else? All these folks running around here. Uh, give me these rappers now. Little Uzi, Slim Thug. God says a man is not to put on a dress. You agree with that? Yeah, you're like, yeah. If a, dude, if a man have a dress on, you'll be like, what? Come on, man. We got to keep it real, y'all. Bring it out. Who's, who's changing the truth of God into a lie? Who's saying it's okay for a man to put on a dress? Bring it out. We don't do that. We uh, we keep it dust, says the Lord God. Read. For all that do so are an abomination. God said, if you do that, you an abomination. You are distasteful. I do not like you. And watch what he going to do to you. Uh, Zephaniah 1 and 8. Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 8. Bring it and it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as clothed in strange apparel. Having on your drawers in broad daylight, that's strange apparel to God. A man having on a dress is strange apparel to God. He says, I'm going to kill you when I come back. Priest up upon priest up, line upon line. Is that, I mean, this is what it is. Now, see, when we think about God, since I'm speaking to you because the Spirit is telling me, you're saying God is love. Yeah, God is love. He is love. I agree with you. But guess what? This God is nothing to play with. That guy over there, that black image, the real Jesus Christ, the real most high God is nothing to play with. That's right. When you come back, it's going to be bloodshed. A lot of us Israelites gonna get put to death too because we don't want to hearken and listen. We don't think this is the truth. We think Christianity. We gotta ask ourselves: Who taught us the Bible? Who taught us the Bible? Who taught us this image? We couldn't read. Who sat down on Sundays and taught you to worship on Sundays? And this was Christ. They stood up on my native tongue and taught how I'm reading right here. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It says, "Our language shall be another tongue we shall speak." You, you see, see, everything you have been thought of, he's selling you right. Now he just got to get himself right. Yeah. And by him getting himself right, he got to get you right. Because it's backwards. Like, he should be teaching you. My brother, you got to get on this side. You got to oh, get up yeah, to the school. Right. 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 Time is short. You got to get to the school. That way you can learn and you can teach her where she's going off. Like, see, I, I see she got a zeal. The Bible says she, we got a zeal. The black oh, Hispanic, we got a zeal for God. But at the end of the day, man, it's more than that. It's just got to have more than just a zeal. They only get you so far. So what you got in your Bible? Come on now. Speak to me. Just listen. What you got? I got to have a dialogue. I got to make sure I can teach you friends. I got to make sure we're on the same page. We're on the same page. So you agree? What you don't want to do? I don't agree. You agree? Okay. I'll praise you, man. That's good. You, you got a good spirit, sis. <laughs> you sure, sis? So this one you agree? Yeah. looks like the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> Tore it a little bit. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Ah!